Yep. Still grinding. That, my friends, is a roguelike dungeon. Oh, baby, that is amazing. Greetings, cyber dogs and citizens of the internet, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Modded Minecraft Survival Stories 3 with me, Ren Diggity Dog. In the previous episode, we were setting up a so weed as toast machine, and in this episode, my friends, we are going to be working on upgrading our machine using uh, another machine called a pulverizer, but more about that a little bit later, guys. Look at what I have discovered. This is so freaking sweet. I've spent the last hour or so on the server playing with Iskull, just exploring the surroundings around the Meteor Man Cave. As you can see, I have got an inventory full of sweet jazz. What I was after was some more coal, because currently our energy system is coal-based. I was also after some sapli. Got myself some jungle saplings and some pine saplings and a spruce sapling, because I want to start uh, using a, a, a bit more wood variation inside of the Meteor Man Cave. But guys! Seriously, look at this. This thing is absolutely insane. And let me tell you why, guys. At the bottom of this giant freaking ruin are five levels of pretty much deadly freaking foes guarding seriously awesome treasure. Down this staircase are five levels of an ridiculous amount of spawners, chests, rooms to explore, freaking libraries to find. It's pretty much like... A modded stronghold in a way except it's much more deadly in fact it's one of the most difficult things to actually do in survival stories 3 i was going to crack this sucker open today but Eskol said to me dude you are not ready for that man <laughs> you need to be really prepared in order to take on a, a roguelike dungeon so you know what my friends we are not going to be taking on this sucker today we're going to take it on in the next couple of episodes get ourselves a little bit more prepared for that we need to get combat ready man we need to get some proper gear going on we need to get at the very least a bow um, and also we need to plan a strategy in order to take the five huge levels that will be beneath that thing but how awesome is that my friends you know what i'm gonna press j and i'm gonna make a little waypoint over here check it out let's call this thing dungeon disaster as the waypoint because let's face it it's probably going to end up being a disaster but there we go we've got a waypoint on our mini map now and let me just zoom out to show you guys the proximity of this bad boy so it's over here just across this river and the meteor man cave of course is right over here which is absolutely sweet so it's not very far away from our home and that means guys once we are ready to get in there and uh, we're going to need a butt ton of more food also it looks like i've chomped through most of my toast now uh, we're going to prepare ourselves for that. And it's going to be absolutely sweet. Well, Cyber Dogs, it is another glorious freaking day here at the Meteor Man Cave. Barely a cloud in the sky. The sun is a blazing. And isn't this place looking beautiful? Mm, man, the more that I look at this view, the more that I just want to stay here forever. <laughs> it's so freaking gorgeous, isn't it? Anyway, guys, welcome back to the Man Cave. As you can see, there's been a few improvements since you were last on. I've spent a, a, a lot of time on the server uh, over the last couple of days just playing, just collecting some resources, doing the odd touch-up to the cave. And as you can see, I've added a few more foundation pillars and whatnot. And I've also dug out another room, which we're going to be making use of today. And uh, we are also going to be fiddling around with something called a chisel today, guys. And uh, a chisel is going to help us make our man cave look even more beautiful. But we're not going to talk about that now because we've got something really important to get to, my friends. And that is the art of pulverization. In today's episode, just crack this sucker open, we are going to be making for ourselves our second machine called a pulverizer. And if we have a look at the recipe for a pulverizer, it's actually not too bad. A machine frame, uh, a redstone reception coil, a couple copper gears, a piston, and some flint, and we're going to be able to make a pulverizer. And a pulverizer is important for two reasons, my friends. Number one, a pulverizer is going to be able to automatically turn our wheat into flour and number two a pulverizer is going to be able to turn all of our ores into grit and we are currently doing both of those tasks manually 
um, using that freaking grindstone thing, and it is driving me crazy. Damn! A lot of you cyber dogs have been telling me in the comments of the previous episode that we can actually automate that freaking grinder, and we're going to be doing that today, my friends. It's going to be awesome. I've got some really cool plans, actually, for the automation um, of our toast room, as well as that little room that I just showed you. We're going to be turning that room into a pulverization chamber where we'll be able to pulverize all of our ores. So that's going to be awesome, man. Uh, we've got quite a lot of work to do today, though, guys. So I hope you have something tasty to sip on, something crunchy to snack on. Let me just plant these sapli that I've spent the last hour collecting. Um, a spruce sapli can go over here. Let's stick a j this jungle sapling up here. Um, I basically want to get a, a little bit of variation of our wood types inside of the cave. Currently, we're just using pine plankage, and I want to try and get a little bit more variation in there. So, actually, I don't know if that sapling is going to grow there, is it? Probably a really bad place to put it, actually, now that I think about it. Uh, let's stick it over here where there's, there aren't really a lot of trees. Let's stick it over here, shall we? Okay? And we will let nature take over, and we, <laughs> we will let the natural growth rate of those trees hopefully kick it in. Uh, and by the end of this episode, hopefully we can uh, we can we can collect that wood. Our strawberries haven't seemed to be growing very much, have they? But we can collect them, so that's pretty sweet. Um, and our wheat is our wheat field is doing pretty well, man. Mm. Doesn't this uh, toast machine remind you guys a little bit of the maid from the Jetsons? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So her head and her body and her dress and her arms, and it's like she's closing her ears and she doesn't want to hear me. Yeah. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to unsee that now. <laughs> anyway, guys, welcome back to the Toast Factory Machine. And I am super pumped, guys, because today we are going to be upgrading this sucker something fierce. It is going to be absolutely awesome. As I mentioned before, we are going to be making a little machine called a pulverizer. And I just cannot wait to show you guys what this is going to do. We are also going to be installing a little bit uh, of, uh, of an automation scheme um, should I say and I'm gonna to explain to you guys exactly what I, my plans are Let me just get rid of this wall over here. And yes, I know in the previous episode. I was hacking clay with an axe I know I know guys face palm. Yeah, get let's get it out of our system. Shall we? There we go. Can we move on now? <laughs> anyway guys some of you guys noticed in the previous episode also that when we were digging out the cavity for this toast room there was a cobblestone wall and of course that wall is the wall of the wheat farm and this gave me a really really cool idea um, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. Well friends the time has come to install a pulverizer into our toast factory and this is going to be epic. I've just spent a little bit of time figuring out exactly how I want to install this build and I think that I've figured it out my friends. We're going to automate this sucker something fierce and uh, man it is going to be so freaking awesome. I have just built for myself this pulverizer. If we have a look at the recipe it's just a piston, a machine frame, some flint, copper gears and a redstone reception coil. We built most of the stuff in the previous episode so pretty simple to craft and of course we also made this survivalist generator in the previous episode so we are ready to install our new machines and check it out guys I think I'm going to stick it in this position let's stick the survival the survivalist generator over there and we will stick our pulverizer directly above the survivalist generator because of course this bad boy needs power if we actually actually have a look at how much power it needs um, it needs 10 RF, I think, is how much power it needs. Doesn't actually tell us, but I think that's how much um, it uses. <laughs> anyway, there is our survivalist generator installed. Let's get a little bit of coal in there. We'll borrow some from this one. Uh, let's stick that in there. Boom! And let's have a look. Is our pulverizer functioning? Yes, it is, baby. Very, very nice. Now, what this pulverizer is going to do is the following. We're going to stick this hot wheat into here. And as you can see, that pulverizer mashes up all of that wheat and turns it into flour, which is awesome, right? So we're going to be able to take this flour, stick it in this chest. It's going to get sucked out of that chest into our redstone furnace and turned into two pieces of bread, which are then going to be turned into uh four pieces of toast so essentially from one piece of wheat we are going to get four pieces of toast uh, out of this system which is absolutely amazing and a really efficient use of wheat and our crop field which is sweet now the next thing that we want to do guys is figure out a way to send the flour getting its ass pulverized inside of this pulverizer into this chest and all we're going to do to do that is use some more item ducts and a servo 
which we uh, were experimenting with in the previous episode. And check it out, guys. I think we can pretty much simply just run a line of item ducts like this and connect it directly into this already existing pipeline. And then we can install a servo over here, configure this servo to only send flour, whitelist that flour like that. And then, of course, we need to configure our pulverizer um, to send, yes, it's already configured to send the flower out of the top, right? So the top is going to be set to red, and that's going to send the flower out of the top of our pulverizer. So now all of that flower should be landing up in this chest, which it is, and then it should be getting sucked into our redstone furnace, uh, being smelted down into uh, bread, and the bread should then also be going into the into this chest, and eventually the loop will complete itself, and we will just end up with a whole bunch of toast. So that is awesome. Our pulverizer has been installed. Our toast factory has been upgraded. But my friends, I want to do even more to this little uh, factory, and I. I want to basically install a delivery chest right here um, in our crop farm. So basically the idea is that I want to come out here, collect a few crops like this, you know, get some wheat in my inventory, and then be able to just stick that wheat into a chest, which will deliver the wheat directly into uh, the pulverizer, which of course is going to start um, the cycle of creating toast. And I think we can do that quite simply too, using these item ducts. And uh, what I'm going to do guys, check it out, right? I've been thinking about how to do this and I think that I've cracked it. I think what I'm going to do is stick a chest in this position over here. So we'll stick a chest like that with a stair above it so that we can open up the chest um, to put the wheat that we get from the crop fields into it, obviously. Um, and then we're going to have to dig our way in. Hang on. Are we in the right place here? Yeah, I think so. So we can dig ourselves in this way, like this. Mm -hmm. Let's just repair this damage. And we probably need a torch out here as the sun is going down. Uh, where have my torches gone? Have I dropped them? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Let's just get a torch burning out here. There we go. Now, what we want to do is send the wheat that we gather from our crop field directly into this pulverizer, right? So we're going to use a little bit, uh, a few more of these item ducts to do that. And what we can do is run. Hmm. You know what? Actually, it might be better. If we do it this way, right? Um, if we put the chest over here, no, I think this I think this way is going to work quite nicely. So check it out, guys. If we run some some item ducts from the chest into the pulverizer, like so, theoretically we should be able to send wheat from the chest into the pulverizer. Of course, we've got to stick another servo in here tell the servo to accept wheat, which we're going to be sticking in the chest, and of course um, ignore the redstone signal requirement like that. Now any wheat that we stick into this chest should be sent into the item ducts, but we can see here guys that the item ducts have connected to one another, and this is not good. We obviously don't want this, and this is where the crescent hammer comes in. And the crescent hammer allows us to manipulate these pipes basically. And if we have a look at the recipe for a crescent hammer, it's actually quite simple. It's just iron and uh, one uh, tin ingot, which is pretty awesome. So I've made this crescent hammer and check what we can do with this. We can actually disconnect the connections of the pipes. We'll have to disconnect this one too, just like that. Okay, so now we've got a, a, an item duct running from the, the input chest of our toast factory from the pulverizer and another item duct running from our input chest to the pulverizer from our crop field. Now the theory is, right, when we stick a whole bunch of wheat into this chest like so, the wheat should get sucked out of this chest um, and sent directly into the pulverizer. Hmm. All right, let's just make sure that we've Okay, we haven't whitelisted the wheat. Okay, there we go. So we whitelist the wheat in the servo, and now the wheat is getting sucked out of the chest and sent directly into the pulverizer. So that is freaking awesome. Now the theory, of course, is if... Actually, can we, can we get back in here? The theory is, of course... Um, I think we're probably going to have to bust our way through here. Um, there we go. Now the theory is, of course, when we put a piece of wheat into that chest we want it to come into the pulverizer for it to be pulverized into flour and then for that flour to eventually turn into toast so we should right now have a completely self-sufficient system an automated system that is turning our wheat into toast so let's have a look and make sure that it's working this wheat is getting pulverized it is getting delivered into this chest 
uh, as flour. There it is. The flour is then going into the redstone furnace, getting cooked down into bread, which is going into this chest. That bread is then getting sucked by this servo and getting sent back into this chest and this chest is slowly going to accumulate bread which will eventually turn into toast which means our toast master machine has been completed and is functioning optimally man that is awesome man i just wasn't feeling the love with the positioning of the pulverizer there so i've tried something a little bit different here guys i've moved the pulverizer one block in this direction and i think that's going to help to create a little bit of a better look over here i do like seeing the pipes i think they look really awesome but um it just wasn't feeling very neat to me i don't know there was just something funky about it um so what i've done over here guys is moved the entire system one block in this direction and I'm just gonna reinstall the servos over here. This one is going to need to accept flour, whitelisted, turn the redstone control circuit to ignore, like that. And I've also moved the input chest one block in this direction, so we'll need to just fix this up, uh, fix up this giant hole that we've hacked into the side of the wall. Uh, oops, there we go, just like that. And I think this is gonna look a lot better because what I've done with the toast machine is I've added dark oak wood planks uh, behind the machine itself. And I think that's what I needed to do for this one also. So let's just fill in all of this space over here with some just normal cobblestone. We won't even see that, that's fine. And then what we can do, uh, let's fill in the space too, is get some dark oak wood planks into the back of this, just like that. And I think that is gonna make the place look a whole bunch better. Let's get some pine wood um, over here just to complete it like that. And I think that's looking a little bit better. Hmm, yeah, it's still a little bit of work to do with the aesthetics of this particular build or of this particular room anyway. Um, and it looks like we've just run out of pine wood plankage. Dang it! Well, my friends, that is looking a lot better, I must say. <laughs> the previous configuration was looking a little bit all over the place, but this is starting to come together. Still a little bit of work to do on the aesthetics in this room, I think, but I'm pretty happy uh, about where it is for now. We now have an upgraded toast factory, which is producing a ridiculous amount of toast, and not a moment too soon, because I've got one piece of toast left in my inventory. Look at that, man. <laughs> Look how much toast we've made. That is crazy. I mean, this is this is a, a, about as much toast as we've made from probably two stacks of wheat, which is just absolutely ridiculous. So this is absolutely awesome, guys. So happy with how this build has turned out. So freaking sweet, man. Mm. Oh, isn't Iskal cute? Oh. Cyberdog glove for you, Iskal. You know, guys, there is something to be said about achieving the milestone in modern Minecraft of never having to worry about food again. Am I right? Man, it feels so good to have access to basically an unlimited amount of toast right now. So freaking sweet. I mean, next up, we're going to try and, and uh, put some variety into our diet and try and find some different foods to eat. But for the moment, we have sort of moved past the very early game, so to speak, and we now have solved our food problems, which is amazing. Now, the next problem that we want to solve is this problem right over here, standing here like a butthole, grinding away at our ores. I've been doing this for ages now, guys, and I am tired. I am tired, tired, tired of grinding away, doing the manual freaking labor. I want to automate this system too. And the good news is that that pulverizer that we just installed can do exactly the same thing that it's doing with wheat with food which is absolutely amazing. So for the next part of today's episode, my friends, we are going to be installing a pulverization facility right here in this little chamber that I've dug out inside of the Meteor Man Cave. It's gonna take a little bit of a while, I think, um, to figure out exactly how I want this room to look. But for now, what I want to do is get the thing up and running as fast as possible because I do not want to grind anymore. So you know what, my friends? We're going to get this sucker going, man. Let's make a freaking furnace. Oh, wait, we don't have any cobblestone um, or any other materials that we need. So give me one second while I get all of the required bits. Well, my friends, I can tell you one thing. Recording modded Minecraft on YouTube certainly is a challenge. There is so much stuff to remember. But I tell you what, I have so much fun doing it. I absolutely love the process of creating all of these machines. I now have everything in my inventory that I need to create a survivalist generator. So we're going to make another one of those bad boys. And now we can make for ourselves another pulverizer. Pulverizer. There we go. 
Um, let's make another one of these bad boys. Um, and you know, this system of crafting just makes life so much easier also. You know, all you have to do is make these things one at a time um, and you just have to methodically go through the process to make all of the machines and make all of the bits and bobs that you need. And it's actually really not that difficult um, to do. And it's, it's strangely satisfying. I mean, I find it strangely satisfying, although I might be a freak of some kind, but I really enjoy making these complicated machines and then seeing them in action. It just, it just feels so good to see all of the, the, the items that you have um, gathered you know, all the time you've spent caving, all that time you've spent grinding, trying to get all the required materials to make things like a pulverizer, and then to see it in your world and see it actually doing what it's supposed to do. It's just so freaking awesome. It's such an awesome feeling. Uh, anyway, <laughs> there we go, guys. Another survivalist generator and a pulverizer. Now, I realize that this is definitely not the most efficient way to grind down ores. I know that there are a bunch of other things that we could be using or uh, other power supplies that we could be using to jet to power up um, our pulverizer. But you know what, my friends, I am just so tired of grinding that I just want to do it right away. I literally, we don't actually have that many ores left um, to pulverize. Let's just have a look how many ores left. Yeah, another stack of iron, another stack of zinc, and that's pretty much it. All of these things are uh, different ores that I'm not really that worried about at the moment. Uh, what is this last ore over here? Borksite. I mean, I'm not even going to bother to grind that because I don't know what it does. Um, so I basically just want to get the, the remaining ores that we found on our expedition. I just want to get them ground down I want to get them out of my life um, and into this grinder as fast as I freaking can. And uh, that's exactly what I'm going to freaking do, man. So let's install a little chest over here where we will be inputting. We're going to actually have to need a, a, another little chest. We're going to make a nice quick and dirty build over here for our um, automatic grinder and then spend a little bit of time uh, later on um, actually making it sweet. Okay, guys? So don't worry too much about this. Um, although, I think we're going to do it this way. We're going to do, do something a little bit different. I do believe that to pulverize ores, you actually need a lot more power. Yes, you need 10 RFs to, to pulverize ores. And currently, this survivalist generator is only generating 5 RFs. So, here's what I'm thinking, right? We're going to make two survivalist generators um, so that we can push 10 RF into our pulverizer. And that should give us enough power so that the pulverizer will just carry on going uh, without actually stopping. And I think we actually have enough to make one. Yeah, there we go. So let's get another generator installed above the pulverizer like that. And let's just go get a little bit of coal out of our furnaces over here. Um, and then we can power up this um, pulverizer also. And we can get rid of all of these ores. I literally, I want to stick them in this chest like this, okay? And I just want to forget about them. I don't want to think about them for the next two hours. And I want to come back here and I want all the pulverization to be done. And for me not to have to freaking worry about it anymore because it's driving me crazy. Why is it that every machine I make looks like a freaking robot? <laughs> Look at this guy. It looks like he's a robot wearing a crown or something and he's got both of his hands on top of these chests. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> I'm never going to be able to unsee that either. Anyway, my friends, I've finished installing our little pulverizer machine over here. As you can see, I've stuck all of my ores inside of this chest. They are getting sucked out by this servo, which I've just set its red zone signal to ignore, and I've just kept it on blacklist. And that's going to send any ores that are in the chest. Let me just show you. Uh, there we go. Any of the ores that are in the chest into the pulverizer. The pulverizer is going to do its work and deliver the stuff into this chest over here. And eventually, we will be able to go and uh, smelt down all of these pulverized iron ores. And I think pulverized iron is exactly the same as iron grit that we get from the manual grinder. Let's just have a look. Can we smelt this, um, this pulverized iron? Yes, we can. And that should be smelting down into iron ingots. Let's hold our freaking paws and thumbs and that that actually happens. Boom, baby. Yes, iron ingots. Okay, excellent. Oh, man, that is awesome. Well, my friends, unfortunately, time does fly when you are having fun playing modded Minecraft, and we have just run out of juice for this episode. But I really do hope you have enjoyed it. We have upgraded our toast factory with the pulverizer and installed this very cute little pulverization robot, which is dealing with the automatic process of doubling up all of our ores. And in the next episode, my friends, we are going to be taking on... The 
that roguelike dungeon and it is going to be absolutely insane so you definitely don't want to miss that uh, that episode thank you so much for watching this one my friends if you enjoyed it you hit that like button i really appreciate it it really does mean a lot and if you want to help me get bet better at modded make sure to leave a comment in the comment section below and uh, thanks so much for watching my friends been ren diggity dog playing survival stories 3 we'll see you all in the next episode